morning everybody 5:53 a.m. October 19th 2017 all right I want to throw a theory at you guys um it's actually being somewhat noticed in uh, weather articles so we're gonna talk about it but here's a quick look at the Atlantic uh, we can clearly see our big big uh, Atlantic Bermuda pressure here is basically just forcing all systems one way or the other around this big pressure ball so I wanted to show this to you guys to give you an example when we're talking about the Bermuda Atlantic pressure uh, this is often what it looks like so um, it's very rare to see things go through this pressure so you can clearly see most of the weather that we have that is from the Bahamas north or even coming out of the Gulf a little bit is being pushed around the left side of this pressure bubble and then anything to the southeast of it is getting pushed up the other side so I just wanted to show you this as a perfect example of how this pressure works all systems will move around one way or the other uh, depending on wind shear depending on uh, um, already existing momentum that type of stuff so I just wanted to get, get you guys a shot of this so you can see it clearly here now I want you to notice something also this front wall that we've been watching that is the reason that invest that we had right here is being pushed towards Ireland and the UK once again um, this is the remnants of that wall so it has passed over into the Atlantic Ocean and you can see it's like a straight line that comes all the way through the Caribbean almost into the Pacific Ocean and you can see it affecting these systems um, in the Caribbean here now, once this passes, basically clears our area and is far out into the Atlantic, that is once again going to leave the Caribbean open to form storms. This is where the warmest of the water we have left is. And you can clearly see there's tons of action going on here. We have storms blowing up all over South America here. We have it all up the, the land strip here, all the way through the gap that we were talking about with Nate. And then it looks to be that the Gulf is pretty much... Um, clear as of right now more than likely because of a pressure there's usually high pressure behind the fronts of these walls so we can see this thing passing from west to east so that's something important to notice now I want to show you what's going on with this typhoon uh, about to be in uh, Japan's area um, and how it may in turn affect us here in the US and we're gonna explain that I'm gonna show you why alright guys I have you pulled up here on Wikipedia and I want you to real, uh, understand this term here. This is called the Madden-Julian Oscillation. Now, this is a weather event, and rather than getting into it in detail, I'm going to leave the link for you guys, and I want you to come read some of this. And this is what um, this actually is. This is a rare situation that happens that they're already projecting to be an issue. Now, if I can, I'll zoom in here a little bit, see if I can get these pictures a little bigger. Now, I want you to notice something. This right here where my mouse is, is is exactly where that typhoon is that is going to go up the coast of Japan and then roll back off into the Pacific Ocean. Now, check out some of these arrows here. This is the exact thing that I'm talking about, the Madden-Julian Oscillation. It's also known as MJO. And again, this is a rare weather event, but they're actually projecting this to happen with this typhoon that's about to hit Japan as a Category 3 to 4, possibly even a 5 still. But look at where this weather pattern shows this thing going because of this uh, type of event. They're expecting this typhoon to roll off the the coast of Tokyo, which is in Japan, come out into the Pacific Ocean, and then look at this arrow here. It brings it up almost into Alaska. They're projecting this to be a little bit farther south than this, but then do a hook up and then possibly ride down the west coast of the U.S. This could bring a lot of uh, unusual ro uh, warm weather into areas of California and even uh, the Baja in Mexico. But the point of this is this. This thing is going to roll up and then come down the west coast of the U.S. and it's going to act eventually come down the west coast of uh, Mexico and into the Caribbean. Now, like I said, it's going to it would take me forever to go through this entire article, but you'll notice in this article they talk about how once this system, this uh, MJO system, which um, is known for carrying big storms from the West Pacific all the way to the west coast of the US and then down the west coast and into the Caribbean. Now these things are known to cause weather patterns that are unusual for the season. Um, even though we're in October, which is a, um, not an uncommon season for hurricanes to form in the Caribbean, they're expecting this weather system to bring this thing down the west coast into the Caribbean and cause the Caribbean to be a prime area 
for hurricane formation. And this also happens to be exactly when Halloween is rolling around when we found, <clears throat> excuse me, when we were looking at the charts and noticed that hurricane forming and passing underneath South Florida on Halloween. So this is all tied into itself. We're going to look at the models once again, but the fact that the Weather Channel and the meteorologists are actually talking about this MJO situation, again, I really want you guys to look this up and read this article. This causes one of two main things. It either causes the uh, Caribbean to be all churned up and also in a counterclockwise motion, which I'll show you on the charts once the storm rolls through, and it causes very, very cool weather to be in the, in the northeast. So this can also be responsible for causing snow. So we need to really keep an eye on this thing. This is projected to actually happen around Halloween. So you can see the path of this. This is the typhoon, where the typhoon is right now. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Uh, it's going to roll up the east coast of Japan. It's going to come out into the Pacific Ocean, possibly, more than likely, underneath Alaska, and then down uh, the west coast of the U.S., and then eventually hooking into the Caribbean here of the U.S., churning up the water, already moving in counterclockwise motions. And it specifically says in this article that this thing is known to cause um, out-of-season hurricanes and out-of-season snow and cold weather in the northeast with also leaving the west coast very hot. Like, California will be much hotter than it is right now, uh, seasonably hotter. Now, that's very interesting to me, and the reason I looked at this is because they actually had an article about it on today's uh, news ticker page that I look at. So, very interesting to look at. We're going to take a look at the typhoon right now and tie this all together. All right, really quick, here's another example of the MJO effect. Basically, it's weather that is... Uh, churning up and basically building momentum in the West Pacific Ocean like we're watching where this typhoon is as you can see here this is the typhoon right here it's moving up towards uh, Japan and then eventually gonna roll off to where Tokyo is in Japan and then it's projected to come out into the Pacific Ocean and follow our jet stream belt and then eventually it's gonna be lined up with the west coast of the US now what they're saying is that this thing is gonna come up in this direction and then get pushed down by a force we can already see some of that force happening here causing this uh, cyclone deal in the middle of the Pacific <clears throat> to the north of Hawaii so what they're projecting is that this typhoon is gonna do its thing in Japan hopefully not too bad Tokyo right on the coast here not in a good spot anywhere in Japan is in bad shape for this storm guys this is a very big storm uh, it's, gonna, it's projected to hit about 130, 140 miles an hour before landfall, but then once that happens, like I said, it's going to follow the jet stream along here and then possibly come down uh, the west coast of the U.S., not as a typhoon by any means, don't get me wrong, it's the fact that this system is moving down causing different pressure deals going on in the Caribbean and the Gulf, and this is what they're saying is going to churn up the Caribbean and the Gulf, <clears throat> sorry guys, enough to where it's uh, possibly going to cause a big storm around Halloween, and that's what we were seeing on those charts. If you remember the video from yesterday, or the day before yesterday, rather, we had a big hurricane underneath South Florida. So let's take a look at the typhoon and see its movements as far as we can go. All right, and now I have this set for... 1500 meters to get a better read on the the wind patterns we're looking at um, at any given time you want this set to 10 meters because this is where uh, the winds that we will experience uh, more times than none are so this right here is the typhoon uh, by Friday check out its movements I want you to take a look at its momentum going into the Pacific once it already passes through Japan and then back into the ocean here is Saturday the 21st Sunday the 22nd and Monday the 23rd even as early as Sunday we are already going to see water being pulled out of a lot of these uh, coastlines here you can see the momentum of this thing some of its gonna be pushed into the continent or I'm sorry the island of Japan rather and then some of its getting pulled out closer to the west side so this is why we get some of those situations where you see water being pulled out of some beaches and then in other places it's being thrown in you gotta look at the momentum and the spin of uh, this typhoon it's gonna be sucking water out from this way and then throwing it all back in this way as it rolls up the coast here and it's projected to do that it looks like it's just rolling up the uh, east coast of Japan you can see a tiny little thing here. Uh, we had more than one cyclone forming at once, but I didn't think that was going to happen. A lot of people were reporting that there was going to be four and five typhoons going on at once, but that doesn't usually happen. You'll get those on the early 
uh, charts and stuff like that, the early prediction charts, but those quickly go away. You can see a little one right there, but we'll move forward here. And by Monday the 23rd, it's already moved from the, the farthest west part of Japan all the way up through Tokyo. So this is a quick moving storm, but it's what happens after it that is very um, interesting for the U.S., now you can see it becomes a big system out in this area, almost like our jet stream works. The second we have storms that pass out into the Atlantic Ocean, this is the same situation that Ireland and the UK deal with once the weather gets pulled up to the jet stream. And now picture the UK and Ireland as um, the, the northwest of the US, like areas of Oregon and, and uh, North, Cal uh, North California, areas like that. So you can see this whole system gets pulled, still in a very tight cyclone type uh, formation here. Thursday the 26th. Here is Friday the 27th. And that's when you begin to see it dipping down into this area. A lot, of, a lot more times than none, this thing will just pass right over the U.S. as part of the jet stream and keep moving west to east, not so much affecting the Caribbean. But because of this MJO effect that they're talking about, which is more rare than a nor'easter, guys, this weather system here, or this weather situation, is very rare, but it does happen, and it often happens when, it, when you're dealing with typhoons in the West Pacific that are eventually picked up by the jet stream and then brought towards the U.S. Now with this MJO effect, picture this weather. This is the farthest we can go on Ventu Sky. Look at how it's starting to affect the uh, Pacific Ocean right off the coast of California and Oregon. So now what's going to happen is this is going to push this pressure down into this area and it's going to start circling in a counterclockwise motion all throughout the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. And they're actually projecting this MJO situation to be strong enough to cause rotation in our Caribbean. And now that's why we were looking at the uh, Tropical Tidbits charts and we were seeing a pretty big hurricane forming crossing over Cuba right under South Florida and then possibly into the Atlantic Ocean right here. Here is a quick idea of the timeline of this typhoon that is heading towards Japan. You can see here the red, you match the red to the red, we're talking 111 to 130 mile an hour winds just before landfall um, a, a little to the west of Tokyo. Tokyo is about right here where my mouse is. This is the island of Japan. Uh, so these coasts here, guys, this coast is in for a rough ride with this typhoon. Nothing in its way to slow it down, uh, to stop it from growing, except for some of these speck islands in the way, which will do absolutely nothing to slow this down. And then once again, obviously this is a big concern. Then we're dealing with this. I'm going to have this in the description box for those of you that want to look into this. Madden-Julian oscillation effect. And this is exactly why they think that this typhoon is in the perfect position as far as the jet stream conditions and our current weather to have this thing brought all the way across the Pacific Ocean, uh, basically right into our backyard in on the west of the U.S. So definitely got to keep an eye on this. This is our current view of... Um, the Caribbean and the Gulf right here, you can still see a lot of action going on all the way up through Mexico, South America. Once this front wall lets loose here, guys, this is the end of that big front that we were watching crossing the U.S. that took away our invest. And once that invest is gone, that is going to leave the entire Caribbean and the Gulf wide open for counterclockwise spin. That's what happens in this month, even this late in the month, too. Guys, there's been significant hurricanes in uh, December and January, so just because that November 30th number is rolling around, especially with a season like this, that does not mean that we won't see hurricanes. Now, we've been lucky for the last like week or two with this front wall not allowing anything to form in the main area where storms usually form, but now that it's passing over into the Atlantic Ocean, and as you can see, uh, this is our invest. It's going to turn into another system, and yet it's heading right towards Ireland and the UK once again, so they may need to brace for another uh, weather system with another one kind of right behind it. Looks like it's throwing a little whip of uh, weather at it uh, later on in the future, October 23rd. But if you notice, once we get towards the 26th, 27th, look what we have here, and look where it's coming from. That's the main idea here. This would be the typhoon moving across Japan, all the way across the Pacific Ocean, up towards uh, the northwest U.S., and then riding down the west coast, and then causing spin right around here. This is exactly what the MJO effect causes. It causes cold weather in the northeast, um, abnormally warm weather in the west, and then it causes the Caribbean and the Gulf to be very stirred up. And look what happens around the 24th here. 
start moving forward, you can see all this counterclockwise motion here that is directly from that typhoon and the MJO effect that we were just talking about. And then you see it move into the Caribbean just under just underneath Cuba, it looks. And then we have the entire Gulf and Caribbean spinning in a counterclockwise motion. And we can basically see the beginning of a storm forming right there by the 27th. There's the 28th. And that's about as far as we can go. We get the 29th with a system right in the pocket of the east coast of Florida, Georgia, South, and North Carolina. So guys, season's not over yet. We need to pay close attention to this typhoon and exactly where it goes um, while it's crossing the Pacific Ocean. All right, that is it for this morning. Sorry it took me so long, guys. Trust me, I'm working on this nonstop. Um, we will talk this afternoon. I should be off on Friday, actually, which would be a great thing, all right? Um, any questions, leave down in the comments, and I'm going to link this MJO link so those of you that are interested can look it up and check out what it's all about. All right, guys, I'll talk to you this afternoon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.